King County supervisor was beaten up while he says he was trying to protect a stranger. Surveillance video shows Tom Patty by his white SUV in downtown Stockton. Now there's a dark colored car next to his. You can see something's going on inside. Patty says it was a man violently beating a woman. So he walks up to the car. Two other people get out and then you can see he throws the first punches. He was being aggressive and I knew it was coming, so I you know, threw a punch to you know, keep him off and defend myself because of his aggression and what he was saying to me was, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, come on, what, you know, he was challenging me and I'm trying to create separation for her to get away. Now, he does get hit back, suffering fractures in his face. Patty went on to tell us that after the attack, he didn't regret getting involved because he said he was helping someone get out of a bad situation. Police are now looking for those two suspects in that car. Well, tonight we have our hands on a report concluding former California State Assemblyman Raul Bacanegra likely behaved inappropriately towards three women who worked in the assembly. The report also reveals Bocanegra asked for an investigation into the allegations, but when an independent investigator tried to interview him, his attorney says he was no longer requesting an investigation and was unwilling to participate. Bocanegra resigned a week later. That was back in November. He was the first California lawmaker publicly hit with allegations of sexual misconduct after a public letter called out a culture of harassment in the Capitol. Two other lawmakers, Matt DeBobney and Tony Mendoza, also resigned. And Assemblywoman Christina Garcia is currently on voluntary leave pending the results of a sexual misconduct investigation. Months after a high school soccer coach is arrested for human trafficking, his former students are using their talents to help other victims. Can you Students at John F. Kennedy High School held a concert tonight benefiting Weave, a local nonprofit that helps sex crime victims. Late last year, a teenage girl said she was a victim of sexual assault and it was being forced into human trafficking. Sheriff's deputies rescued her and another girl and arrested Elon Seagraves. He was a soccer coach at JFK at the time. Seagraves is currently in jail on charges of false imprisonment and human trafficking. Well, the price tag finally in for the October firestorm. How much the tab the feds are picking up and how much California is on the hook to pay. New numbers show how a staggering number of California homeless literally have nowhere to go. What's being done to keep a roof over some of their heads in Sacramento? And dramatic video of a chase out of L.A., how it almost cost a photographer his life. We're back in 60 seconds. New tonight, a chase in Southern California nearly took out a freelance journalist and it was all caught on camera. Take a look. Whoa! 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 Oh! Wow, that was the end of a three minute chase Tuesday when the driver of what's believed to be a stolen car slammed into someone stopped at a red light. That vehicle then ricocheted into the crosswalk where the photographer was standing, narrowly missing the guy. I'm not hurt. I feel very lucky, um, but it was a scary experience. I was shaking for a cool 15 minutes or so. I got a lot of people calling me and texting me asking, how are you? Are you OK? You got to be careful. The driver who led the chase was arrested. The driver in the car that was hit was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. San Francisco police releasing new body cam video showing some intense moments as they confronted a murder suspect a couple of weeks ago. It's pretty dramatic. Some may find it disturbing, but we can tell you that no one was actually hurt. So here it is. This was the scene as police came up to a parked RV with a suspect inside. A 
lot of shots fired there. And all the seven San Francisco police officers fired more than 60 shots. Again, nobody hit by gunfire. About two hours later, the murder suspect came out of the RV and gave himself up. A 16-year-old was arrested in Modesto today for bringing a gun to his former high school. The Stanislaus County Sheriff's Department says that a parent notified a security guard about the 16-year-old sitting in his car in the parking lot of Gregory High. He said he was there to retrieve some things that he had left behind in his locker. He did admit that he had a rifle in the car. It was not loaded, although there was ammunition in his car. The sheriff's office says that he made no threats to the school, but he's now facing several charges. Also in Stanislaus County tonight, authorities are investigating two cases of arson. The first from Turlock, where firefighters say someone was setting trees on fire last night. Five different cypress trees were burned between 9 and 1030. If you know anything about those, you're asked to call Turlock police. And then investigators say a fire that burned a cabinet shop in Waterford was arson. Firefighters got this video of the fire February 11th on Hickman Street. More than a million dollars worth of damage done. Surveillance video caught two men in the shop starting the fire. Both wore masks and hats to cover their faces. If you know anything about this case, you can call Stanislaus Regional Fire. KCRA 3 wildfire coverage. California spending nearly one and a half billion dollars last year fighting the wildfires in the North Bay. The Legislative Analyst Office told lawmakers today that the federal government will reimburse most of those costs, but the state will still need to come up with about $371 million. The costs include debris removal and infrastructure repairs following the fires in Napa and Sonoma counties last October. And the storm not just causing problems here in Northern California. Evacuation orders are in effect in Santa Barbara County where there are serious concerns about possible debris flows like the ones that devastated the town of Montecito. This is video from in January when 21 people were killed by the mudslides. Now officials are worried that it could happen again because of overnight rains. As many as 30,000 people are currently under mandatory evacuation orders. Residents say they are taking the orders seriously. I feel a, a measurement of caution. I think people are, are cautious and they are alert and they are, they are paying attention and they will do what they are told. In the lower parts of Montecito, you can actually see thousands of sandbags lining key businesses and homes and rail barriers are up to block any debris from the freeway. And Californians aren't the only ones having to deal with the weather. Yeah, from New England to the Mid-Atlantic, a storm is bearing down on the East Coast. Dan Sheneman shows us everyone's preparing for the worst. Along the eastern seaboard, authorities and residents are bracing for a nor'easter. It's going to be pounding with the winds. In Massachusetts, authorities in some coastal areas are urging residents to evacuate. You evacuate and go to friends, family, somewhere uh, away from um, the danger of uh, the, the tides. In Boston, workers were busy filling sandbags and deploying them in flood-prone areas. In Milford, Connecticut, storm drains were cleared out. Officials there are concerned the storm surge and high tide could cause a repeat of October's flooding. And along the Jersey Shore, it was time to board up. Mm -hmm. And tighten up. This one sounds like it's packing a punch, and I'm very concerned about this. The Mid Atlantic is preparing for a potentially historic windstorm. Gusts could be up to 60 miles per hour. Potomac Electric Power Company says it has extra crews at the ready to deal with power outages. And authorities say anyone in the storm's path needs to be ready if the lights go out. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. So that's going on. We've got a different kind of storm that we've been watching here, Mark. Well, yeah, around here we have our own storm to deal with and we're not out of the woods just yet. We still have some more rain and snow to deal with. Currently in Sacramento with rain, we have 46 degrees. This little band of rain that's coming in is dragging in some colder air. Right now we have 50 in Stockton, 53 in Modesto, 29 degrees in Tahoe. Back during our six o'clock news, we are in the 30s. It is getting a little bit colder during the day today. Snow levels were actually up around 4,000 feet, if not higher and sometimes that is in the process of coming down just a little bit. We have this next line of rain coming through. Now this isn't going to last as long or be as heavy as what we saw first thing this morning, but as it goes on by, we'll see another few tenths of an inch of rain. But what might be more interesting with this is as it goes by, there are all indications that it's going to try to drag down some colder air and perhaps finally bring us some lower snow levels as we go through the next few hours. 
This is how much rain we picked up before this line of rain went through. Good soaking in Sacramento, about an inch and a third. Stockton and Modesto, only about a half an inch. Didn't get quite as much in the San Joaquin Valley, but Auburn's been over an inch and a third in Grass Valley now pushing close to two and a half inches of rain and all that wind we had. These are the top wind gusts around 11 o'clock this morning out at SAC International. We had a gust of 53 miles an hour. There are a lot of spots in the central part of the valley and onto the east side that had gusts over 40. Marysville, a gust of 44. I own had a gust of 50 miles an hour tomorrow. Not nearly as windy, but we'll still have some rain to deal with. Now I think tomorrow morning in the valley it'll be dry by noontime. Sun and clouds with a temperature around 51. We'll likely see more showers and maybe thunderstorms develop around three to five, maybe six o'clock, and I think that'll dry up as we get into the evening. In the foothills, the timing would be similar. I think tomorrow morning will be cool and dry. By the afternoon, we'll see showers once again develop with snow probably above 3,000 feet. And in the Sierra, I think it's going to snow throughout much of the day. Temperatures will stay in the 20s. Sometimes the snow will be a little bit lighter. Sometimes it'll be heavier. But if you're planning on heading up into the Sierra for Friday and taking advantage of the snow for the weekend, keep in mind, will likely have chain controls up on 80, 50 and 88 right on through the day. Sometimes the travel might be a little bit better, but mm. sometimes it'll be kind of like what Tom's been showing us. Yeah, it's been uh, difficult for our crews up there today for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I mean, thanks, Mark. <laughs> All right, still to come tonight, we're going to introduce you to this week's My 58 Superstars. Name's Roger Crawford, and this Granite Bay resident never let his disability stop him from stepping on the court and performing his inspirational story next. And a bit later, a rocket launch makes for a major milestone for a local company while helping people like Mark Finan get a better look at the weather. Welcome back. I'm Dale Rogers. Determination and optimism have helped Roger Crawford, who calls Granite Bay home. As tonight, K-33, Michelle Dapper introduces us to this week's My 58 Superstar of the Week, Roger Crawford. I love the beauty of the game. I love being out there. It is, I just feel exhilarated every time that I they hit a tennis ball. For Roger Crawford, the sport of tennis mirrors life's daily challenges. Tennis really changed my life because it was something that I could be successful at. You know, growing up with a physical challenge, I, I, I desperately was looking for something that, you know, made me feel like all the other kids. Born with a rare condition, ectrodactyly. I tell everybody that once you meet Roger the first two minutes, uh, you don't even see his handicap. One finger on his left hand, two 
on his right. You probably never thought about how does he serve. You know, I mean, he can't hang on to the ball. Three toes on his right foot, a prosthesis on his left leg. It was amputated when he was five. I grew up in a household that told me over and over again, you don't live in Pity City. For more than 44 years, Tony coached Roger to stay in the game. It was that constant improvement that challenged me to see if I could make him a better player. And, uh, and he bought into it. For about two years, we hit the ball between just the service courts because he wasn't strong enough to carry on a full-length rally. And, uh, and then, of course, by the time he became a freshman in high school, he made the varsity, and his win-loss record was 47 wins and six losses. Then it was off to college, where the ball was once again in his court. Oftentimes, we underestimate ourselves, right, and we overestimate our obstacles. He made the tennis team at Loyola Marymount University. Consistency is more important than perfection. And so that's how I compensated. It was just giving myself one more chance to be successful. A 22 and 11 record at LMU, honored as the first and only Division I athlete to compete with four impaired limbs. I wasn't the fastest and I wasn't the most powerful, but I learned that if I could hit the ball over the net one more time than the other person, I'd win the point. A statement serve perfecting placement and timing while positioning himself into four different Hall of Fames. Everybody can find a reason to quit. You just gotta find a better reason to keep going. So Roger's been adapting to the sport his entire life, but this time the sport actually adapted to him. We're gonna make you a custom racket using 3D printing. So here it is, and I, I'm just so excited that Wilson would do this for me. They uh, made this piece, so the dimensions are exactly the same as uh, the racket that I was using. It used to be a piece of wood. Swinging at what Whatever life serves his way, giving his best return while taking it one point at a time. If I could have normal hands and normal legs and trade the life that I have, I wouldn't do it. In Lincoln, Michelle Dapper, KCRA 3 News. Great stuff, Michelle. Roger has found his true calling in motivational speaking, where he's spoken all over the world, including 17 countries. Don't forget, we have a page on our website stuff that is home to all of our My 58 Superstar stories. There's also a form on that page so that you can nominate your own athlete. Go to caseheray.com slash My 58 Superstars. I was watching his, um, his, his method. Yeah. He's got a wicked little quick yeah. serve, man. And he's got I great know. form. You can see it repeated, repeated, meaning he worked on it for a long yeah. time. He's one of my new heroes now. Me great too. Story. Great story. Gotta, we need to meet this, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Have him come in. It'd be yeah. nice. That's a great story. Well, a new report shows a staggering number of homeless people in California don't even have a shelter to go to on these cold nights. What's being done to keep one in Sacramento open? Is the Cold War heating up again? The new nuclear rhetoric out of Russia's president and the response from the U.S.? And a new satellite launches into orbit, one that'll help keep an eye on our West Coast weather, the role a local company played in making it happen.
Well, being homeless is a major problem in California, and a report released just a few hours ago shows it's even worse than you may think. The numbers show a dramatic spike in homelessness all across the state. The Institute for Local Government report also shows that no part of the state is untouched by this issue, and most of those who are homeless really have nowhere to go. According to the report, in January of last year, more than 134,000 people in California were counted as homeless. And while that's nearly 14% more than the year before, experts say the real number is likely four times higher. But this is an even bigger problem. The report shows that of the 134,000 people counted, more than 91,000 are unsheltered, meaning they are literally out on the streets. And the report shows that Northern California is where the problem is growing the fastest. Well, one of those places that puts a roof over their heads is Sacramento's winter homeless shelter. Yeah, it's supposed to close in just a few weeks, but now it's clear that it's going to stay open for longer, but how much longer? Here's what KCRA 3's Dana Griffin found out about the center's future. Two months after Sacramento's winter homeless shelter opened, many are learning about how well it's working. There's like two out here. That Mandy Pace says this shelter has kept her and over 250 people alive this winter. These people are bathing in, in some eating and drinking out of this creek, but now they have clean water, they have somewhere to shower, they have somewhere to go to the bathroom. The shelter, scheduled to close at the end of the month, will now be open longer. Can the city afford this? Well, we can afford one. Um, we can't afford three. The center costs more than $400,000 a month to operate. Triage shelter is an... And Mayor Steinberg is working to raise $20 million in private funding for two additional triage centers throughout the city. If we're going to do something... Earlier this week, Councilwoman Angelique Ashby questioned that cost, the cleanliness of the center, and even dogs. I was not happy that there were 90 dogs in there. Many people will not go into shelter unless they are allowed to bring their pets. So we were actually very deliberate in saying you can bring your pets. Mayor Steinberg says the shelter is not perfect, but it's providing services for those in need while reducing crime in the area nearly 50%. Anytime you have a lot of, uh, of extra officers um, infiltrating an area, um, most of the time there is a decrease in crime. The tone at tonight's community meeting has mellowed, and many have changed their opinions about the shelter's effectiveness. If you take an objective step back from it, probably give them a B on the shelter. Um, and so, you know, they're working hard. They'll figure out how to do better for less. The mayor wants to keep it open so that 200 people are not put back on the streets. But some still question the city's transparency. How long will it remain open? Don't know the exact answer to that. In Sacramento, Dana Griffin, KCRA 3 News.